to another episode of Coding Secrets. This time, I'll be explaining how we achieved the environment mapping for Sonic R on the Sega Saturn. Environment mapped objects were typically highly reflective objects, such as a trophy or any other object covered in chrome that you wanted to appear super shiny. The T1000 in Terminator is a great example, and achieving that kind of an effect in a game was considered very cool at the time. I really wanted to have a super shiny metal Sonic in the game, but because of the way the Saturn handled texture mapping, it was actually impossible for the hardware to produce environment mapped polygons. I'll try and explain why this was the case. The Sony PlayStation was capable of producing environment mapped polygons. To achieve this, you typically started with a square texture that was a crude representation of the 3D world around the object that you wanted to be environment mapped, wrapped around a sphere. Then, in really simplistic terms, to create the super shiny surface, you treated each polygon like a kind of mirror. For each corner of the polygon, we calculated a line from the player's point of view and worked out how it would reflect off each corner of the polygon. Then we imagined each reflective line as firing backwards to a big 2D image of the texture placed in front of your viewpoint. And where the line passed through that image, that's the location in the texture that we'd attach to that corner. It didn't work quite like that, but it's close enough for this discussion. If the polygon was at a different angle, the reflected lines would cross the texture at different points, and we'd end up with a different part of the texture on the polygon. There were lots of different ways of playing with the normals and polygons to get different results, but the key takeaway is that for environment mapping to work, you have to be able to map any part of a texture onto any corner of a polygon. Now, the PlayStation allowed this kind of texture mapping. The way the texture mapping worked was that any corner of a polygon or specifically a triangle on the PlayStation, could specify any XY coordinate in the texture map to use, which is exactly what you needed for environment mapping. The Sega Saturn, however, worked in a fundamentally different way. Its 2D was an extension of the sprite system used in the Sega Genesis. So imagine a 2D sprite with a texture on it. The texture always covers the whole sprite. All the Saturn hardware did was allow you to distort this sprite. You could distort it anywhere you wanted, but it always fundamentally had the whole 2D texture mapped onto it. The number of pixels along the top was always the same as the number of pixels along the bottom. You couldn't change how it read the source texture. Because of this fundamental difference, it was impossible to do environment mapping, as it couldn't display an arbitrary section of the source texture, just the whole thing. So how do we manage to produce environment mapped objects on the Saturn? Well, we wrote an entirely new triangle rendering engine, completely in software. Instead of using the hardware to draw the polygons, we took an area of memory and plotted pixels using just the main processor to write out bytes of information in the correct pattern to make up triangles. And because we wrote it all ourselves, we could design the texture mapping exactly how we wanted it. So one of my team essentially wrote a software version of the PlayStation hardware rendering in C on a PC, and once it was working, I converted it into assembly language for the Saturn slave processor so the main processor could run whatever game code we needed, and the slave processor software rendered anything we wanted environment mapped. We then took this image and drew it as a scaled sprite to get it on the screen. Ironically, we didn't end up using environment mapping on Metal Sonic or any other character, but we did use it for things like the title screen and the loading screens. If you enjoyed this episode, leaving a like or perhaps even subscribing would be amazing. Either way, I hope to see you next time on Coding Secrets.